My goodness, dudes and dudettes, we've got some men to talk about here. In our center wing, potential mid-tier value. The fullback position is shocking in the, the mid-tier. We've obviously got Jaden Campbell, but at the moment, he's still not training with the main squad. So can you even select him heading into round one with the buy in round two? I think it's a no. So we're very much focusing on the center wings here. And yeah, a bunch of those these players will have the jewel with the fullback position anyway, and you will select them at CT Dub if you get that opportunity. So Alex Johnson up top, guys, at 596.5K. The average is 58 with him, and the 73 and the 68 average in the previous two seasons just shows that there's very much clearly 10 to 15 points of value in Johnson, but really it just depends on the type of time and the run that you get him at. Because we know that the beginning of last season, they scored really well. He wasn't actually a part of a lot of it. He had a really nice time sort of just before they fell off and then with their injuries in the middle forwards and, and the like, and, and they really just weren't able to win games, usually means that Johnson isn't scoring as many tries. So if you expect the Rabbitohs to be a better side this year and you think that you can, they can do it from round one, then Johnson could be a great pick for you. So I am personally expecting some bounce back from him, but also the team as well with that sort of medium to hard start to their season. But really, I just think he's one of the top clear options in this group to be able to start with. And if you have that amount of cash available just under the 600K, then I would definitely be expecting a 60 plus average across the year for someone who doesn't play Origin uh, and is going to be available for a couple of those major buys, given I believe they have a buy in around 17 there in that one. So Johnson, awesome starter for your year. They have a buy in round seven as well. So not too bad to kick things off for a guy that you don't have to move to your bench during that beginning part of the season. Jesse Ramian, for him at four, uh, 577, the average of 50, 56 and a half. He does have too many 30s and 40s, unfortunately, with a little bit limited upside compared to that of Johnson, given he's almost 20K cheaper. I just don't think that money drop is enough for you to select Ramian over Johnson. Therefore, I just wouldn't bother selecting Ramian. Obviously, the, the nicer draw to start, the buy in round five is, is a little bit more hurtful compared to Johnson. And if we're looking at the center wing position, guys, that is probably the toughest position at the moment to get some value. There's a tiny bit of news today. I think you're going to get this video a couple of days after I pop it out. But uh, <laughs> there's a little photo shoot with Chevy Stewart with the one jersey holding it. And then you've got Xavier Savage with the wing jersey holding that one up as well. Uh, and then we'll talk about Ty Munro in a second. But uh, yeah, it sounds like not great news. Let's hope that it's not true. But Campbell Graham looks like his sternum hasn't gotten any better and, and a good chance he has to get surgery on it. So we'll find out about that one. But again, this is a couple of days. Uh, I've made this video a couple of days before it's come out. So that's that there. But yeah, Raymond, 23s and 40s, average of 63 and 59 in previous seasons. So that's two solid seasons, obviously, but not a heap of value with you know, him going on small runs, but not having the the clear upside that someone like Johnson has. Will Penasini at 5.73, sort of no big upside for him. It was his best season with 51 the year before. He definitely has the ability to go into the 60s range if the Eels can do really well and Moses stays on the park. He had no scores over 50 when Moses was out at the end of the year, so he's definitely due a bit of a breakout. But again, I would prefer Johnson considering he's done it for many more years. I would take Penasini over Jesse Ramian in in this one here, given I think Penasini has a little bit more growth in his game and a little bit more upside on that. And that's what you're looking for here in round one. The Eels have a solid draw, obviously the dogs to kick things off, but into Panthers. So that's a slight worry, but you know, Ramian kicks off with Warriors and then gets some easier games from that. So Penasini really solid one with some upside. Dean Mariner with his 569.7 price tag, it's so high. He has averaged 70 in his limited amount of games. Last year, his one massive game there where he got to the 100 mark really just ruins his value. I believe there's too many risks to start with him just because he's fighting for that spot with Oates. And it sounds like Arthur's has kind of got that. Oates has been put into the Queensland setup. So that should mean that he's actually you know playing a lot better. He's fit. Um, and last year was a bit of a tough season for him. And Billy Slater would know all of those details that we likely don't. You know, the Broncos will know that. Slater will probably know that as well. So that's something to note with Mariner. I definitely think he has potential. Uh, if he you know, had potential, if he was a little bit cheaper, but he still could get up to those heights, just not on a regular basis. In a good team though, for sure. Connor Tracy of 566, he to 55. Very, very consistent player, but he's sort of moving to a lesser side now, fighting for a spot either at center or fullback. 
coming off a small injury in the preseason, sounds like he's fine. I think you leave him for now, given pretty much every game he played last season was big minutes, over 70 plus. Uh, there's not a lot of upside moving from a better team to a poorer team, in my opinion. So we leave Connor Tracy. Roger Silva asked to check at 539. So we do drop down a decent amount now compared to those above. You know, you're getting 40K below Ramian and 60K below Alex Johnson, which just gives you a little bit more value and a little bit more money to, to play with that he doesn't have to score as crazily up into the 60s to, to be worth it. It's a little bit closer to the, the high 50s, mid to high 50s, and you wouldn't be too terribly upset about it. But really, it's hard to see some value at center for him. He's never been a guy that's been a top tier, sorry, I should say, in, in recent memory, hasn't been a top tier fullback for scores in Supercoach. It was when he was absolutely dominating for the Roosters, when he had some really, really good numbers in the you know, in the 70s and 80s, which was awesome for stretches of time. But it's hard to see value at the center mark. What are the chances of him absolutely, absolutely going nuclear like a CNK? And then obviously Dallin on the wing, none of the centers in that team were, were really dominant at all. And, and Roger is a strike weapon, but he's someone I think you just watch and see in the trials. If he looks great at center, then you could potentially look at him. But for now, it's a leave in my book. Dylan Lucas of 502K. He is likely a 55 plus scorer if if playing 80 minutes. So you can sort of it's sort of a, a player that you can bank on to get those scores. It'll be less volatile, which is exactly what you want with a guy playing the edge in the center position with that duel. The worry is Kai Piss Paul, who is looking closer to being ready. There's a little interview that he uh, that he did there talking about he's unsure if he's going to be playing any minutes himself in the trials. And it's sort of like a day-to-day, week-to-week prospect with his toe. And, and he's just very happy to be actually playing and out there um, yeah, training with, with the main squad. So it could just be one of those ones where it's close. It's in those first few weeks that he comes on and probably takes some minutes off Lucas, more likely than he would take minutes off Rizal. And and Jackson Hastings has come out, um, thanks, to, thanks to Whisperer for uh, tweeting to Hastings and, and Hastings you know, coming back and saying how much of a talent and how good he thinks Kyper Pierce Paul is. So it's hard to see Lucas getting a really, really, really good go at close to 80 minutes there. Avrilo, 488. Tool position, averaged 48 last year. He's someone that I am I have plenty of interest in personally. He's been in and out of my team. The, the buy in round three is a slight killer just because I think with the center wing guys, you want to have as many of those guys sort of locked in for the first four or five weeks because the center wing's position is tough. We're going to be getting a lot of cheapies on our bench. And and if you're having to, to slot in a couple of those cheapies on, on a week-to-week basis, you have no idea what they're going to get. They could get you a 21 week and, and playing that roulette with this, with the center wing position can be very, very tough. And we've all been through it where you, you bring that guy in, he doesn't score too well. Whereas a lot of these guys like the Avrilos, yes, more expensive, but you kind of know what you're going to get. You're going to get some really high upside games and you're going to get some sort of thirties and forties at their low. Whereas these other cheapies could get you a 15 at their low uh, or, a, or a, you know, a single digit score, like an, a Calm Pereira and then into a 70 or 80 for sure. It, it could happen. Um, and even some of them won't have that high upside. So that's where you want to look at maybe having one of these type of guys only and the rest playing on a regular basis. But as I said, plenty of interest for him moving to a stronger back line, likely to be on that left-hand side. So yeah, it's sort of a little bit less excitement if he is on that on that left-hand side than what there would be if it's on the right. But he could definitely explode and play better. 48 is not a high average to get in a better team uh, with some more opportunities and, and him growing and improving as a player another year at center rather than chopping and changing. I think it's super helpful to him. But I still think if it's on the left-hand side, it's likely next to Alemuelu and O'Sullivan and then Bostock on his outside, which is going to be great, I think, anyway. So definite improver in my sights into sort of the 55-plus range with some high upside games with a little bit of a better floor, I think, as well. Tom Munro, as I said, Graham doesn't look great for him, unfortunately. So the new chatter there is what I've got at the end of it. I've added to my paragraph is that it's his sternum's not good and he may need that long-term surgery. So if that's the case then he would get that spot likely long-term. And that would mean Isaiah Tass plays left uh, center. They may need someone else for that right center role for a little bit. But when Whiten comes back, he should go into that spot. Uh, maybe they just put you know Tass on the right early and uh, you know, have someone else slot into the left-hand side, Atane Milne, one of these type of players. Munro just sticks on the right. 483 for a rookie. It's pretty tough, to be honest with you, for sure. But there is upside if he gets the wing long-term. Unfortunately, the awkward price, I think, at, at that 483, a really, really nice sort of four or five game, four game stretch there of 67.7 in his average with, 
you know, a couple of bangers with lots of tries, his base is really, really low. So if he can, it looks like he's put on a bit of size. If he can continue along that line and, and be a really strong ball runner out of trouble, uh, then all of the tries and the try you know, assists and the like, the attacking stats, they will come for sure with Ty Monroe. I see, yeah, just have a, have a little wait to see what happens with with the Graham situation. We may know more by the time this video comes out, but um, if that's the case, either way, we'll... Um, we know what to do with Munro. I think he's a he's a leave if if Graham's fine, and he's a potential buy, not a not a standout buy if if Graham is out. Zach Labor, 465 for him, average of 57. So he definitely has some upside with with the try scoring. His base will be a little bit better playing center if that's the case. But really, how will the Cowboys start? Uh, and and he's fighting for a spot as well. So there's a few negatives on that front. But yeah, at 465, when you're when you're priced down uh, closer to the sort of 45 range. That there, if he was to average 57 again, which is, is very, very likely if the Cowboys team is going fairly well, which, you know, in times when he played last year, they they were going good in one of the two of the games and then not so good in the others. So if they're a little bit more of a consistent outfit, then that could be helpful. You likely avoid on those two worries, but he could definitely do well. And, and we know that he has some talent. And yeah, if we find anything about him being locked in and, and he's their guy, then um, definitely look at him at 465 with the Cowboys uh, really cannot being able to go any worse than they did last year. Taylor May, very clearly on my list, guys. He's a superstar of our game. I just think when you've got superstars, he's had 12 months since his surgery. That is enough time for one of these guys, even though he's going to be a footwork type of guy. He's super strong. His body, for the most part, outside of this ACL, has been really good. So for me, he's priced way too low in the 40s, which is good for us compared to sort of the above couple of players. He's cheaper than them as well. He has 60s upside. He averaged a whole season at 63. So just don't outthink the room with May. He's in the best team. He's a great player, so much talent. Best team in the comp, as I said. And if he's named, you have to slot him in. You, you would absolutely hate, yeah, okay, you could get lucky and he gets injured again from a you know, super coach standpoint. Not obviously, yeah, we don't want to push injury on anyone, but really that could happen. But he could just come out and average 65 and then you've got to trade him in in round three and he should have started with him. Like, I think it's only downside if you don't start with him, who's going to be fairly highly owned. And our last two on the list, guys, Jesse Arthur's a 376, the average of 37. He has five years of mid-30s averages across the season. So what makes this change? Like the team was gunned last year and he still couldn't average over 40. Grand final, he was amazing, obviously, but you're picking, are you picking him off that? And I just think he's a placeholder until you get someone better if you do pick him. Like you start him, the odd game you'll get 20, the odd game you'll get 55 or 60 with a try, maybe 70 at best. Uh, which would be great if you got some closer to the 70s, but I think that you're waiting to, you have him in there waiting to upgrade him for sure. But look, in a team that, that's really good, their start isn't great either, so he could have some low scores to kick things off and even lose money. Um, but obviously the chance of getting a 60 plus average in the first few weeks is there as well. Finished off with Tom Eisen, who's guys at 356. He has the duel with the 2RF, which is awesome. Um, I just think he's more relevant here down in the uh, center wings for sure. If he was to get a right or a left edge spot, I really like him personally. Uh, just at the price, I think you need to slot someone in that could easily get you a 40 or 45. But if he scores a try or something, it's up near the 80. So you'd imagine fairly close to a 50 average um, with his edge games. Look, to be honest, they aren't. They don't look incredible, but he hasn't been there for a longest, long enough stretch of time. When he scores tries, he does well. But outside of that, he's sort of a 40s guy, but priced down at 35. If he's a 40s guy, that's a minimum amount of value there, sort of seven to ten to fifteen, um, with yeah, you know, with some games where he'll score tries, which will be awesome. Um, yeah, so there's new signings obviously with RFM and the like that means he you know maybe he doesn't get the spot probably who knows but um, yeah at worst he's in the middle and I don't think you can select him but the center to RF duel is is pretty cool. So that's the uh, center wing and the fullback guys. I got tumbleweeds in the wing fullback value outside of of Jaden Campbell so couple in the cheapies category but that's where we're going to be heading next guys the three different videos again the hook halfback and the 5 8 video on on cashies we got the front row forward the 2rf are going to be together and then the center wing and the fullback cashy so that'll be our next three in the super coach world uh and that'll kind of until tlt i think that'll leave us for for super coach but yeah big thanks to everyone who's watching the the super coach videos are growing um, obviously my knowledge on it I think is growing as well I hope that comes across in this video done plenty of study on it and uh, should be able to go well in fantasy and supercoach this year big thanks to all you for watching and uh, yeah appreciate it see you later